when you are in a state of fight or flight, you tend to make worse decisions and you kind of keep feeding the same Mm. bad choices. So you tend to choose things that keep you in um, a disrupted balance, work-life balance. Welcome to Forever Young, the health and well-being podcast from Lanzarote. My name is Mario Pedazzoli, and in every episode, join me in conversation with a variety of health experts and special guests as we explore what it means to live well. We may not find the secret to eternal youth, but join me on our quest as we explore just what it means to live a balanced, healthy and happy life. Hello again and welcome. And after recently releasing previous episodes with the great Colin Jackson and Denise Lewis, it is great to be back, rested and recharged, with an array of special guests and health experts joining us on the show in the coming weeks. And talking of rest and recuperation, in today's show, we take a closer look at anxiety and burnout, why this happens, the early signs, and what we can do to reduce our anxiety. Unfortunately, anxiety disorders are on the increase, and no wonder. For the last two and a half years since the world went into lockdown, we have been on a roller coaster of different work and home arrangements, working from home, hybrid working, and now back to the office, frankly, just trying to keep our jobs as well as our sanity. So what can we do to help alleviate the stress and anxiety that this uncertain world brings? Well, to help us today, we welcome the wonderful Karis Cooper, yoga teacher and personal trainer here at Lanzerhof at the Arts Club. And many of our listeners today will, of course, be familiar with Karis, enjoying her group and one-to-one training and yoga sessions. Her classes are focused on becoming more present with breathwork and the body, whilst exploring postures to build strength, specialising in a creative style of alignment-based vinyasa flow hope i got that right karis welcome to the show thanks mario thanks for having me on your podcast today (laughs) and that was a lovely introduction thank you thank you how are you today i'm very well thank you yes i've had a lovely rested weekend on the beach in suffolk so um that was lovely how are you i'm very well thanks well the sun's shining i'm not sure for how much longer so um let's enjoy it while it lasts now you're fresh from teaching a class today how did that go it was really great, thanks. Um, we had a full class today. We only have four a capacity of four people still, following on from smaller classes after the obvious pandemic. Mm. Um, but it was a vinyasa flow based class today, so we focused on um, focusing on the breath and opening up the body and building strength. Um, And uh, vinyasa flow is really about kind of moving your body with the breath. So it's the combination of the two that works so nicely together. So, um, yeah, it was a great class. Thanks. We'll um, we'll talk more about your work with with smaller groups and one to one um, in the course of the show today. Um, And so, as I said, many listening know you well. But for those who do not tell us about the work you do, um, and how it's evolved over the years, in fact. Um, so I've been in the health and wellness industry for over eight years, um, and I've worked primarily with corporate professionals for most of my career. Um, and I started off as a personal trainer, actually, um, and then went on to do my yoga teacher training. Um, and I've really noticed how, over the years, I've noticed how the two practices really complement each other. So yoga is amazing for opening up the body and improving mobility and then obviously personal training is great for building strength and improving fitness um but for me the the foundation for all of health and well-being really should be kind of a focus on meditation and a connection to yourself um because when you have a connection to yourself and you're feeling good within yourself, you make you therefore then make really good health choices. Um, so, so for me, kind of the most important thing about health and well-being that I've discovered um, over the years is getting the priorities, getting your priorities 
in order. So the number one priority really needs to be some kind of meditation practice or breath work. Then secondarily, some kind of um, movement to help with mobility. And then number three, Jason in the gym is going to kill me for saying this, for putting it at number three. But then we go on to um, strength and fitness. Mm. Um, so I think they're all really important areas. Obviously, there's loads of other areas of mo- of our well-being, including nutrition and all sorts of other things, cold therapy. But for those, for me, those are my top three um, areas that are most important. In that order, in Jason. that order, <laughs> Jason. We'll, we'll we'll get him on the show. Right to reply. <laughs> um, and was this? I mean, you're very passionate about what you do. Um, that that comes across. Karis, was this was this a calling? Did you always know you would? Um, you would work in this industry? Um, I've always been passionate about health and well-being from a young age. Um, I was lucky enough, to, you know, for my, my mother used to cook us really healthy, homegrown, organic whole foods. Um, and then, like, I, I went off into the world as a student and had to kind of look after my own well-being and start making my own health choices. Um, made some pretty bad ones. Mm. drinking too much, eating takeaways, gross things like that, you know, smoking, all sorts of horrible things. And I really started to notice the things that made me feel good and the things that made me feel bad and started to educate myself on those things. Discovered meditation, discovered yoga, um, did my, then did my personal training qualification, yoga qualification, and just, um, then I just kind of realized I really, you know, I really wanted to share my knowledge with others that may not know or may not be able to make the best health lifestyle choices. Mm. And I get a real kick out of um, helping other people feel healthy, um, look healthy and live, make better lifestyle choices. Yes. And and um, talking of your clients and, and, and what do you do you sense there's been a change in what they're looking for, what they need, how you can support them better? Has that has that changed over the years too? Um, yeah, definitely. So what we've I've always seen is um, postural issues, um, very common things like rounded shoulders, forward head. We're all craning over our. <laughs> we're both doing it right now, actually craning yes. over our computers, phones. Um, we often have back pain, um, and weak core. These are the common things that I've seen over the time and also including stress problems. Um, but what I'm seeing now more than ever in the last year, um, is chronic anxiety and burnout. Um, and that is something that's quite concerning and I think it's something that we're not really quite at the stage of acknowledging yet Mm. but because I'm kind of right there seeing dealing with people's well-being um, on a daily basis I'm really seeing that there is a huge increase in that and it's something that I'd like to address and help people take steps to address it basically. Mm. Yes quite right anxiety disorders are on the increase as many as one in five adults are affected but the great majority are not addressing the problem or receiving any treatment or making any lifestyle changes and they probably don't know where to turn or even uh, maybe are in denial Um, let's take a closer look how do you Karis define anxiety and burnout um Anxiety is a state of being which is characterised by feelings of worry or unease that something bad has happened or more commonly something bad is going to happen. Um, And there are physical changes in the body like an unpleasant kind of fluttery feeling in your chest, shortness of breath, increased blood pressure, sweating, trembling, dizziness, rapid heartbeat. Um, and prolonged anxiety, I think, in my opinion, it's prolonged anxiety that leads to burnout. Mm. Um, and burnout is kind of a more serious version of anxiety that if not treated can become almost irreversible. It's really hard to come back when you reach that point. So it's so important to 
address um, these things in early stages. Um, the World, World Health Organization has defined burnout as a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. And um, so the symptoms of burnout include feelings of exhaustion, increased mental distance from one's job, and reduced pro professional productivity. So it's being recognised by the World Health Organization, which is what, one great thing, but also it's being recognised as an occupational phenomenon, mm. which is quite interesting, I think. Well, let's look two parts to this. You, you know, why do you think there is such a rise? And then I guess we'll, we'll, we'll come on to how best to, to treat and uh, 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 the, the symptoms of that and the causes of that. But... Um, Yes. Why, why is there such a rise in, in, in anxiety and burnout, do you think? Um, I think because as we all know, don't need me to tell you, I think we're all quite aware that we've just been through a world pandemic. And the world came to a standstill. Most of the world came to a standstill. We went through, most of the world went into lockdown. And this is a historical event, something that we have not experienced before and I don't we were not equipped for it we did not know what was going to happen and for many people it was actually obviously for many people it was very difficult and many people suffered with a lot of loneliness and depression but also I'd say having spoken to many people um, a lot of people felt that it was actually a really an unusual time to be able to slow down and not be in the rat race, um, lead a much more simple, simpler life, spend quality time with family if you were in lockdown with your family, which may have been awful for some people, um, I'm sure. But also, you know, we, we love have a love-hate relationship with our families, don't we? But really spending quality time with family and... Um, just leading, I think, just leading a slower pace of life that many of us adjusted to quite nicely. And then when everything opened back up again, we kind of threw ourselves back into the same very speedy pace of life that we were in before. And I think having had, we just had a glimpse into what it's like to not be in the constantly doing, doing, doing culture. Mm. And to have a little glimpse of that and then be thrown back into this to back into it again, it was I don't think we were quite ready for it. I think it's it was not a, like flicking a switch, is it? You can't just carry on where you left off. Exactly. Mm. And that's unfortunately what we did. And I think really we needed some kind of game plan to ease ourselves back in mm. um, and have some kind of happy medium where obviously we need to do our jobs we needed to go back to being productive but we need to put in place some kind of way of giving ourselves breaks to make sure that we manage this anxiety and burnout that seems to be occurring now as a result of this lifestyle change huge lifestyle changes that we've been through we, you'll remember people were uh were anxious just as much about resuming their social life um, as getting back yeah. to, to work. Um, you know, after months of isolation, um, that in itself is a cause of anxiety. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the whole picture of this constant doing culture that we create. It's not just work and chores, personal chores that we have to do, but we place this quite a big pressure on ourselves to be doing so many different social events as well mm. and um, I think we got quite used to not putting that pressure on ourselves and almost having an excuse to not have to go to you know that christening or that birthday grandma's birthday or something like that you know and um, having an excuse to just lead a, a simpler life and, and stay at home and rest. Mm. And um, it's part of the problem that we we don't talk about this anxiety as much as we could or should, do you think? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think 
we're not really having these conversations for some reason. And maybe it's because there's a bit of a stigma attached to anxiety Mm. and it potentially being seen as a weakness or something. And um, and actually not talking about it is making the problem worse because I think people are starting to think they're alone in this, but actually it's um, it's much more common than we realise. And realising that many of us are going through this is very reassuring. Mm. Hence why I kind of wanted to talk about this today because mm. it does it helps people to know that they're not alone in this mm. um, and we're all kind of going through it together really. Yes, and for those that are working from home, or having this hybrid arrangement now, which it seems very commonplace now. Um, I wonder if that's part of the problem as well, because before, if we're being simplistic about that, this, there were there were clear boundaries between work and home. And now if you are working from home, it's just all quite blurred. And plus with the digital world that we're in, I think people are always contactable. And I don't think the boundaries are there that whereas maybe they were before so does that do you think add to the stress and the anxiety yes i would absolutely agree with that um although working from home <clears throat> has allowed us to not have to commute every day which can be quite tiring for people mm. but at the same time like you say it then blurs the boundaries between work life and home life And I know many people, many of actually my clients that I teach yoga and meditation to on a one-to-one basis um, have said exactly that, particularly during lockdown. It actually, that was a cause of burnout as well, because Mm -hmm. um, not being able to have a break from your work life, even just going and sitting in your living room, there was no escape from work and and that just kind of really highlights the point that this is um, work driven. So it's like work, having work constantly on your mind is one of the causes of this kind of anxiety and burnout. Mm. So um, I think having some kind of separation, if you are working from home, putting things in place to give yourself a break is really important. Mm. I think, uh, yes, good time to talk about that. that, that there, there are surely simple techniques and advice that you, you, know, you can give us all to help us cope with the day-to-day challenges that life throws at us. You know, taking breaks is one thing, but how should we be living our lives? Should there be more discipline? Is, is that part of the problem? Um, I don't know if uh, it's about having more discipline. I would say that the problem comes down to us as individuals um and so i think this is something that many people can relate to um we have a constant stream of thoughts going through our minds Mm. everybody has this um i like to call it the noise and that is a Mm. term coined by one of a teacher that i'm very inspired by called prem rawat He's an inspirational speaker. Um, and so the noise is something that I think everybody can relate to. And it's almost like uh, having a radio, carrying a radio around with you all day and not knowing where the off switch is. Um, and so that can be very exhausting for people. And the, the truth is we're actually meant to have an off switch. We're meant to give ourselves breaks from this constant noise in our minds mm. And I think that you can get yourself into a bit of a negative feedback loop created by this, this not having a break from the noise. So. Hold on, let's expand on that. Okay. A negative feedback loop. Yes. So that starts with the noise, as I said. And then this con- not having a break from the noise can be very, very exhausting. And that then can start to trigger the sympathetic nervous system. Mm. So there are two parts of the nervous system, parasympathetic and the sympathetic. And sympathetic nervous system is responsible for fight or flight. So in situations that are stressful, that kicks in. Um, And then the parasympathetic nervous system 
is responsible for rest and digest. So when you are just sitting at home, eating, meditating, resting, sleeping, the, that's the, the system that kicks in. Mm. Um, and we, I think that this noise can lead to being stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. So we get stuck in this state of flight or f- fight or flight. Um, and that's part of the loop that then links into poor sleep quality. So when you're stuck in the paras- in the sympathetic nervous system, you don't sleep so well. And then when you don't sleep so well, this le- then leads back into having more of a negative kind of noise going on in your head. Mm. Um, so, so it's not restful sleep at all you you you're just um no i think this noise that i talk about i think mm. it continues through your sleep mm. you have stressful dreams about things you're meant to do or th- conversations you've had with people and i think you don't have yeah like you say you don't have a restful sleep no which of course is one of the pillars of our well-being and and exactly and, and clearly is one of the steps that we need to take mm. to help um combat this i suppose um what about nutrition and hydration? Do, do these smaller steps play a part as well? I, I imagine it's Absol- all part of the whole. Yes, exactly. It definitely is. I mean, there are the whole picture of well-being is actually really quite a big picture. Mm. There's many elements that feed into it, including nutrition, sleep quality, um, yoga exercise meditation Mm. mental health um there's lots of things that feed into that picture and we could go you know it's endless we could talk about that for a really long time i'm definitely not an expert in nutrition but um i do know that eating certain the right making the right choices with your food can definitely have a positive effect Mm. on your well-being and your sleep quality well this all leads to that uh, well-known phrase work-life balance um does it actually exist it must be one of the most frequently used terms in our in our lives but i think for most of us it continues to be an elusive reality and and it's an aspiration it's it's the holy grail does it exist caris <laughs> good hmm. question um yes absolutely um there is always a possibility of making the right choices for yourself and choosing to create the right kind of balance that means you do give yourself a rest from the noise as I say Mm. Um, and I think this probably leads back into the negative feedback loop that I just mentioned that when you are in a state of fight or flight you tend to make worse decisions and you kind of keep feeding the same Mm. bad choices so you tend to choose things that keep you in um, a disrupted balance work-life balance so work you know constantly answering emails late at night checking your phone late at night Mm. not getting enough sleep Um, bad choices can kind of lead to more bad choices Um, So I think that finding a work-life balance is really important. But I think before you can get to that stage, you have to first be okay in yourself to be making those right choices Mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if someone else tells you to make better choices that lead to a better work-life balance, you might do it for a week and then forget about it Mm -hmm. and get slipped back into the same negative cycle of focusing too much on work and being exhausted and falling back into exhaustion again. But you have to really realize it for yourself, Um, you know, having feeling okay in yourself and therefore making better choices. So it all comes down to that as a foundation to the rest of your lifestyle choices. Yes. Uh, Yes, all makes sense. And leading us back to your work, um, with your clients on a one-to-one or small group uh, I think well we were talking off air about how one-to-one is generally better because 
maybe it leads for a more comfortable experience with your clients and and um, what, what are you finding uh, particularly works with them um so i specialize in one-to-one yoga and meditation sessions um, particularly here at the Lanzerhof. um and i think the reason for that it does work. It works much better than classes because you can tailor the sessions to the individual and everybody's different. And And when I'm doing, for example, breathing exercises with people, you being in a class setting, um, you're, it's very difficult to focus on each individual and everybody's breathing patterns are different and everybody's postural issues are very different. So being able to focus on the individual's needs is much more effective. And also I think quite a lot of people are um, a little bit embarrassed to go to classes, particularly men. Mm. Men are embarrassed to go to yoga classes and they feel much more comfortable not being seen by other people um, and having a bit more of a private setting. Um, yes. I think that's another podcast in itself. Yeah. Uh, men and uh, yoga. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and feeling intimidated generally at the prospect of trying that, even though, and I speak for myself too, we know it is good for us. Um, but it's, the, it's getting over that first hurdle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And accepting that when you start yoga, you aren't, aren't going to be very flexible. And so many, I hear this over and over again, often from men, they say, I'm too inflexible to do yoga. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, you do yoga to get more flexible. Um, and also I think, not to sound sexist, but men aren't very good at not being good at things. <laughs> and also <laughs> men are not as flexible as women. So it's... On behalf of all men, I am offended. By that <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Sorry, not sorry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but so that's why one to one yoga sessions work really well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you do feel a bit intimidated going to a class, highly recommend trying a one to one session first and getting to a certain level. And then if you do feel comfortable to, you can branch out into trying classes. Good advice. And for anyone that is interested, uh, please do email lanzerhoff at theartsclub.co.uk. So now I'd like to ask you, Karis, to maybe lead us all through one of your breathwork exercises, which I know you uh, you did say you would like to do. And I'm happy to be your student. <laughs> and anyone listening, I guess, can follow this too. How's that sound? That sounds great. Love to. Come on then. Okay, so first of all, I just want to kind of um, say that I think one of the first steps to kind of finding this solution to exhaustion, anxiety and burnout um, is about recognizing that you have this noise going on, this constant radio with no volume off switch recognizing that everybody has that and understanding that there is an off switch and I'm going to let you into a little secret that the off switch to this noise is one of the best and most effective ways to find some some calm and peace and quiet is the breath um so the breath acts like an anchor to bringing your mind more into the present moment. And it also is a direct way to access your nervous system. It's a direct way to access and activate the parasympathetic. Um, So nasal breathing, breathing in and out through your nose is really quite incredible. And if you think about other species on the planet, almost all other species breathe in and out through their nose, not through their mouth. And the reason, the benefits of nasal breathing are incredible. So breathing in and out through your nose, breathing in through your nose um, encourages your body to release nitric oxide, which helps your body to, it dilates your blood vessels and therefore helps your body to calm down basically and find more relaxation. 
So that said, enough of the information. Let's go on to the practical. So, so just finding a nice comfortable position in your seat if you're sat at a desk. Sitting nice and tall. And then closing down your eyes. And just scan your body from head to toe. And notice if you're gripping anywhere, holding on to tension anywhere in your body. Very often the jaw, neck or shoulders. And take a lovely big deep breath in through your nose and out through the mouth. Allowing those areas to relax and soften. And let's do that again. So take a big deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Take a big sigh and let any tension in your body just melt away as you breathe out. And let's do that one more time. Breathing in as deeply as you can and out through the mouth. And then closing the mouth down and starting to breathe just in and out through the nose. So when we're going about our busy day, feeling a little bit anxious or even very anxious or burnt out, uh, we tend to take very short, shallow breaths. So I'm going to get encourage you to breathe with more intention and with more depth, slowing down the breath. So to help you do that, I'm going to take a count of five for the inhale and five for the exhale. So first of all, just breathe all the air out of your lungs. And then breathing in through the nose for one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. So just keep that count going, that kind of same pace of breath. You can keep the count in your mind going if you want to, or just kind of be more general with it and take the same kind of slow pace of inhale and exhale. So you're breathing with more intention and slowing the breath down. So you're focusing your attention 100% on the inhale and the exhale. And thoughts will pop into your mind because your mind is not used to you giving it its attention. Not used to you not giving it its attention. So just allow those thoughts to pop in and then bring your attention back to your breathing. Just focusing on the breath. Let the shoulders and jaw relax completely. Focusing completely on the breath can be one of the hardest things to do because thoughts will keep constantly popping into your mind. Just keep bringing your attention back to the breath. So 
So we're going to stay here for another minute, just focusing on the breath. And then starting to slowly open the eyes. And coming back into the room. So on average, people breathe about 25 breaths in one minute. And when you start to breathe with more intention, slowing down the breath, you end up breathing about five breaths a minute so it's a lot slower and that's what helps to activate the parasympathetic nervous system how are you feeling feeling very relaxed Karis, and um can see how that would benefit what's your recommendation is that something we can all do by ourselves i suppose without the need to attend a class or, or be guided through that is that something you you personally and advise practice uh, daily or? Yeah, so I would advise to um, try and do this kind of breath work, um, ideally once a day. So everybody's schedules are different. And um, if you can try and do this when you first wake up in the morning, so just sit quietly, bring your attention to the breath. Um, for, if you can, for say 20 minutes, and for some people that's too long and too painful to sit mm -hmm. and do that for 20 minutes. With our own thoughts. <laughs> Sitting with your own <laughs> thoughts is is uh, really difficult for some people. So if it, what works better for you is to break that down into small five minute chunks, maybe try that three times a day, mm -hmm. five minute chunks, four times a day, mm -hmm. um, even just sitting at your desk, closing the eyes, focusing on the breath. Um, so yeah. Well, I tell you what it did do. It turned off the noise. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. That was, that's the aim. That's the aim. <laughs> um, Karis, thank you so much. Um, this has been a wonderful chat with you, but some simple tips and techniques there on how we can just help ourselves cope with the day to day, which is what this is all about. And, and again, if, um, anyone would like to find out more about Karis's work, um, and joining in Karis's classes here at Lanzerhof at the Arts Club, please email lanzerhof at theartsclub.co.uk. Karis, what's your last um, piece of advice for us all? What would you like to leave us with? Oh, good question on the spot. Um, I would say know that exhaustion, anxiety, burnout, all those things are something that's very com common at the moment many people aren't talking about it mm. and you're not alone and there are ways to help with those things like breathing exercises and meditation and yoga very well said thank you very much it's been a pleasure having you on the show Karis and uh, we'll see you again very soon I know thank you so much for having me it's been an absolute pleasure feelings mutual cheers Karis thank you bye, bye. <laughs>